If it's happening now, we talk about it. If America goes down, the world is going to be crying out because the world is so dependent upon the U.S. in all kinds of ways, looking for a rescuer. Today, we play the Recent Happening Now program from Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, California. Participating are Pastor Jack Hibbs and Don Stewart. They take a look at the COVID-19 crisis and look at it from a biblical perspective. Here's Jan Markell to introduce the program. Welcome to the program and say I'm taking a week off recording and am playing a recent happening now. As announced, I was privileged to be a part of Pastor Jack Hibbs happening now format back on January 22nd right before the corona crisis broke. But this program with Pastor Jack and Don Stewart looks at the issue from a biblical perspective. Let's get right to Pastor Jack Hibbs and Don Stewart, and I'll close with a few thoughts at the end of the program. And our number one desire is to bring you confidence and calm and Christ at a time like this. Listen, I'm going to ask you to welcome right where you're at, wherever you're at, our good friend and resident genius, and I mean that sincerely, uh, Don Stewart. So you can clap in your house right where you're at for Don Stewart. Don, come on out. <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll do this together. Yep. For the right. first time. For the first time. You and I. Six feet apart. Six feet apart and uh, alone but not. Mm -mm. Right? We've got a whole... Not at all. Uh, not at all. Exactly. So, Father, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name that as uh, Don and I sit here live together, first of all, it's awesome. It's, it's thrilling to live in an age like this when we can crack open the Bible in real time and cover the globe. And Father, even right now, I can imagine, I know it's, it's a bit sometimes distracting, but on Facebook, the little bobbles start popping up of people saying hi from uh, Iran and hello from Moscow and hello from New York. And uh, as cool as that is, may not be a distraction, but we're grateful, God, uh, to be able to reach the world tonight. So, uh, Lord, give us your heart. Uh, may we be ready to meet you in Jesus Christ. May our faith be in him alone. And bless our dialogue, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Don, where do we start today? There's so much going on in the world. Where do we start? Okay, here's where we start, Jack, with the living God. You know, the Bible tells us over and over again, some 500 times, not to be afraid. Remember when Jesus was walking on water and the disciples saw him? They thought they'd seen a ghost. What did he say? Fear not. The day of his resurrection, that night, they're in the upper room, and they were cowered. The doors were locked because they were afraid of the religious yeah. leaders. Jesus appears. They thought they'd seen a ghost. He said, fear not. So the first message we have is fear not. Because, Jack, we know as Bible believers, this is not really surprising, all the things that we're seeing. Perilous times will come in the end. And the good news is, which we want to, again, emphasize over and over again tonight, we know how the story ends, don't we? And we win. And that's the thing that keeps us going. Right, absolutely. So you and I talked earlier t uh, this afternoon about um, if there's anything that we could communicate outside of the, the person of Jesus Christ, it's, it's people coming away tonight with confidence, confidence in him. A lot of people uh, feel that the world has been shaken beyond recovery. Um, there's, a, a, there's a local uh, LA radio host whose two friends this week committed suicide because mm. of a lack of hope. Uh, yeah. And that's exactly what we want people to avoid. And so, um, Don, I'll just jump in and, and you go for it. But the first thing that, that uh, we've got on the agenda is regarding, of course, China. Uh, and the headline uh, universally is basically this, is, is China seems to be winning uh, what is known as the coronavirus war among some camps. In fact, President Donald Trump said uh, that Trump calls for American independence agenda to defeat coronavirus. U.S. must never rely on, and here's uh, the key statement, is for a foreign country. Don, talk to us about China and talk to us about uh, what, what, what is it that Trump is, is referring to here? Okay, what he's referring to, Jack, is a biblical concept. Remember in the book of Deuteronomy, the Lord said he set up nations, boundaries of nations. The same thing true in Acts chapter 17 when Paul's in uh, Athens, That's the right. Areopagus, is God has set the boundaries of nations. See, we live in a world today where they don't want boundaries, do they? They want one big globalistic world. China's decided they're going to rule the world, but the Western world are, are basically ruling the European Union in groups 
groups of nations ending sovereignty. The thing that got Donald Trump elected is make America great again. We're the hugest, largest country in the world, the richest country, the best military. And the idea is we can do it on our own. We, you know, we, can, do, we can produce these things. We don't need to you know, send things out to China, don't send things to other countries. That may cost us more, a little bit of the cash register, but the point is, Jack, what President Trump is doing is exactly right. We are dependent on China way, way too much. And it's been the, and now to our detriment, as we talked about the supply line there with drugs and other things could be cut off if they wanted to. We had the trade war going on. So it's a very biblical concept what President Trump is pushing, and that is basically nations, call it populism, nationalism, whatever you want to call it, rather than globalism, because the Lord sets certain boundaries, and in particular, Jack, which we really need to put this in the context, the boundaries of the promised land, a nation he gave the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because see, once you believe in a globalistic world, then God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's descendants are no good, right? Simply because we're all one world. No, God's this is your land, the promised land, where you'll be my witnesses. So what he's doing is exactly right. Trump, is, his policy is exactly right. In fact, um, I, I had written something today and put it on my Facebook site. I thought I had it. I messed up. I didn't bring it out. And it's interesting what you just said, because it's almost as though you and I had rehearsed this, which we did not, we haven't we, rehearsed. We never do, by the way. We never, <laughs> no, we yeah. never, no, we don't rehearse anything. <laughs> we don't rehearse anything, Don and I. But uh, I had made a comment, something to the effect that um, the reason why we're in the condition that we're in right now, economically, and how we're going to talk about this in a moment, and how this all dovetails together is fascinating, but for the fact that God never promised us our wants. God promised us what we needed. Correct. And what happened in America, and you said, you said it a moment ago, that if I'm Joe and I'm producing this widget, and I'm making $3 per widget profit, when I found out that I could make that widget in China and make $5, you know, or four fifty dollars profit, I shipped everything over to China, and I've been doing that for decades. And what I built up was a so to speak, a workforce for me. It lined my pocket very well, and it made my little company now into a big deal, but I became, the master became dependent upon the slave. Totally. And now the slave is rising up, and we, we're going to talk about the coronavirus, but what a lot of people, Don, are not getting is that this is extremely uh, complicated web and we don't want to go down the path of conspiracy stuff, but at the same time, in fact, Don, regarding this conspiracy type stuff that we don't want to go down that path, <laughs> can you hold up your mug yes. to, I don't know what oh, camera? Right here, yeah. Can you guys see that? Can you read it? Don, Don, what does it say on your mug? You can't make this stuff up because it's perfectly fitting, Jack, exactly what the Bible tells us the world will be like in the last days. You can't make it up, can you? And so we're, we're not surprised. Now, the way this took place, we're surprised at this, with, but the, the, the virus and how it spread, but we're not surprised what's happened because what America has done, you know, for the almighty dollar is, again, use China as a conduit, the, as the slave, and the slave has become the master because once the supply line is cut, look what happens. Well, you're stuck, right? But what is happening now, we're seeing, is companies coming back, hopefully, to our country and produce here. Well, and that's what the president, I believe, is going to make that the result of this. So, um, for many reasons, that it, not only, it's always best if we're in control of things, isn't it? So, rather than sending it out, out, out elsewhere just to make a few extra cents on the dollar. Let's, uh, guys, can we play that video of this, uh, what's to this link? We should never be reliant on a foreign country for the means of our own survival. I think we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot. This crisis has underscored just how critical it is to have strong borders and a robust manufacturing sector. For three years, we've embarked on a great national project to secure our immigration system and bring back our manufacturing jobs. We brought back many jobs, records numbers of record numbers of jobs. And this really shows, this experience shows how important borders are. Without borders, you don't have a nation. 
Our goal for the future must be to have American medicine for American patients, American supplies for American hospitals, and American equipment Amen. for yep. our great American heroes. Yep. Now both parties must unite to ensure the United States is truly an independent nation in every sense of the word. Energy independence, we've established that. It's something incredible that we've established. We're energy independent, manufacturing independence, economic independence, and territorial independence enforced by strong, sovereign borders. America will never be a supplicant nation. We will be a proud, prosperous, independent, and self-reliant nation. We will embrace commerce with all, but we will be dependent on none. Above all, we know that the best thing for our economy and the world right now is a very, very powerful victory over the virus. I think so. We Okay. So what he just said, Don, drives the globalists nuts. It certainly does. This causes, in fact, not only the globalists, but many who are within the Democrat Party, because yep. they're globalists. What he just said is national sovereignty, not only for the United States, but for any and all nations. And that has got to drive the Antichrist spirit or the Antichrist, who may not know he's the Antichrist yet, <laughs> yeah. if he's on the planet walking around. I can almost smell his cologne, so to yeah. speak. It's wild. That kind of talk inspires people. That kind of talk encourages people. Because God, as you said, placed that within us. He, he did. I want to read this. I, I went to my Facebook uh, page. Uh, two hours ago, I posted this. Make no mistake about it. This is a sad day for the United States of America. The federal bailout of ourselves, or AK, the coronavirus stimulus plan, to rescue our economy is a necessary evil, but it is one that could have been avoided. I am reminded that God wanted Israel not to lean upon or trust in the strength of any foreign power for treaties or any other nation for Israel's existence. Mm. The God of the Bible had promised to provide Israel with what it was that they needed, but never did he promise to supply them what they wanted. For many decades now, the United States has leaned upon cheap Chinese labor to satisfy our diet of want. As the desire for want grew, so grew our consumption. Now hooked on materialism, the United States of America is addicted to China's ability to literally be our supplier. The master has become, has become dependent upon the slave. Most of us had no idea, listen, that such a sellout of our nation was underway, and perhaps we never would have known it unless a scrappy, street-smart businessman had been elected president of the United States for such a time as this. Donald J. Trump who against all odds and counsel ripped off the mask of the Chinese version of the Trojan horse. But now the enemy is not only within the gates, it turns out that the enemy owns the gates and everything around them. We will be finding out real soon within the next few weeks if President Trump's actions came too late to save the U.S. from its own lust for greed and stuff and from China's desire for global dominance. But my curiosity begs me to ask the question, where was President George H.W. Bush while all this was going on? Where was President Bill Clinton? Where was President George W. Bush? Where was President Barack Obama while my country was being sold right out from underneath my feet? Yeah, amen. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, you know, Jack, uh, and Paul to the Philippians 4.19, he said, God's going to supply all our needs, but not all our greeds, what we need, but not what we, what we are greedy about. And he does. Yeah. But see, America, unfortunately, is, like you said, we've gone over to China, we've got things cheaply, and um, evidently we, we thought we would be fine always. But when the supply line is cut, when yeah. you've got this thing going on, when you've got the trade war happening, look at this, the sovereign nation of the U.S., which can supply all our needs here yes you know, in this country. God has provided he all has of provided. our, hasn't he? Yeah, we've got, you know, we're the biggest oil producer in the world right now. We could, we could do everything. 
Right. And now we've got a president. So let's do it. Yeah. Keep going. I want well, no, to no, no, it's you. great because what I, what I like about this, Jack, this is, this is how the Lord set the world up. People have to work for a living. Remember, the idea is that, you know, in a market-based economy, I don't like to use uh, what we call uh, capitalism, that's Karl Marx's term, but a market-based right. economy means I need something, so you make it, you sell it to me, I'm benefited, and you're benefited, we're both benefited. And that causes entrepreneurship, it causes people to be creative, this and that, and use the God-given gifts that they have, and God has blessed America because of that. We're this melting pot of peoples from all over the world, we're all immigrants, aren't we? We've come here with this great experiment, and God has blessed it, and he's tremendously blessed it this first three years of President Trump's yeah. administration, because he has done things that have caused a blessing with Israel, three things, moving. The, where we go? From Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Now we have the embassy, Golan Heights, which for years and years, since 67, since Israelis right. won it in the war, has been part of where? Been part of Syria. And the president says, no, it's part of Israel. We're the first country to acknowledge that. Right. And then the so-called West Bank, Judea and Samaria, President Trump said, that's not occupied territory. That belongs to Israel. And so here we are, have been blessed. All of a sudden, Jack, in the middle of this blessing, we get hit right between the eyes with this virus none of us expected. And uh, we're in a very trying time right now. Well, Don, um, where did the virus come from? The virus came from China, communist China too, by the way. Um, how has communist China's economy been since Trump's been elected? Not very good, Jack, because what he has done, he's called them on it. All the, he, you know, he's a businessman. He looked at this and says, why are we giving everything away? Why are we paying every, for everything? We paid them to, do, to sell us stuff. Yes, we have. And just like Europe with NATO and that, and it says, you know, he's a businessman. He looks at the bottom line and says, this isn't smart. Let's, let's run the country like a business. You got someone who knows what they're doing. Exactly. And look what's happened. And China doesn't like that. Let's face it. They don't like it. Yeah. And the people, unfortunately, the corporations, the companies, and the, let's Talk like it is the politicians that are in bed yep. with China. And so they're not happy with what he has done or what he is doing. My goodness. And may, so, yeah, keep going. Yeah. But, but just to insert, uh, the, we know as a church that's in touch with our elected officials, there are politicians who, you said it a second ago, they are simply, really, honestly on Chinese payroll. Totally. Totally. Yeah, just like with the UK when they got out of the European Union and Brexit, the reason the politicians didn't want it is because they're getting, you know, the little brown paper bag is handed to them and they're doing fine. But then when the citizens get a chance to vote, what do they vote for? Freedom. We always see that happen. You don't vote for some big glob union. You don't vote for a 32 member uh, European Union. You vote for your own sovereignty, your own freedom. And that's where human, that's why God made human beings the way we are. And that's why America has always been great. Yeah. And I believe we're going to be great again. So listen, um, we, we, we showed that happy music video, right. Danny Goki reaching out to the kids. I did that intentionally because yeah. of the heaviness of sure. where we need to go next. And that is regarding the virus. Um, I, I probably should announce that for on behalf of, the, of both of us. So we're blessed that people tell us things. We, we're blessed that we know, Don, we know people in places. Yeah. We can't quote them. And we understand that when we say something, we take the risk of looking like idiots because we can't say, oh, by the way, I got that from Mr. XYZ yep. at the XYZ. Yep. We can't say that. Nope. So what we can say, friends, is that listen to what we say right now, and then you go judge. Don't panic. Go judge and, and watch. So I asked you where the virus came out of. Not only did it come out of Wuhan, China, but if there was ever a place where viruses have, an, have a habit of, le of, of sneaking out of the building... It's a place called Wuhan, China. Yeah. It's happened before. Yeah. And the danger of what we have now been told, when I say now, I'm not sure how public this is, but what I'm saying is not secret. Previously, Don, we have seen the elderly susceptible to this. Correct. But in the last 48 to 96 hours, we are watching now a shift globally in its ability to attack younger people. Yep. It has set the medical field on its heels. Just when you thought you had the cat in the corner, it turned out to be an elephant on the roof. And we are now hearing from sources that it is mutating and that we can watch it in the lab mutate. It's coded. It is, uh, what's the word? Uh, it is... Uh, 
synthesized mm -hmm. to mute, which means that they took a, an existing sickness, an existing organic flu, and they humanly engineered it. And what we're looking at now, just like a time-released ibuprofen or aspirin would act, a time-released painkiller, this is now apparently a time-released flu which mutates and now we're going to expect to see it attacking younger people. I don't say that to scare people. I say that for us to pray for our nations. Don, want to go on that? Yeah, let, let me, I'm glad you brought that up. Let's, let's take a step back. This, it was starting in November where they found this out in China. Let's think it logically, Jack. You know, they think we've got the tinfoil hats on, the conspiratorial theory. Uh, China's got 3.7 million square miles, 3.7 million. Third biggest landmass in the world next to Antarctica and Russia, all right? Uh, 1.4 billion people. And this pandemic, well, epidemic at first breaks out where? In the city of Wuhan. Well, why at Wuhan? Well, Wuhan of all of the cities in China is the one place that has the level four laboratory. Gee. Where, where is, you know, it just been there for about two years where they have all the pathogens such as SARS, MERS, H1N1, Ebola. It's all there. Right. The previous lab in Beijing in 2004, SARS was brought out of there twice out of that lab. Repeat that. Yeah, in the previous lab they had in Beijing in 2004, SARS escaped twice. SARS killed 10% of the people. 8,000 people, um, 80,000 people got 8,000 people died, about 10%. But that was in the lab there. They moved, they built this new one in Wuhan <laughs> just a couple of years ago. And we're told that coincidentally enough, in 3.7 million square miles, this marketplace where they eat these animals, these wild animals out, outdoor, all of a sudden the virus just spontaneously happened right there. Then number two, once they realized in the Wuhan area that people were getting the virus and people were, you know, dying of something uh, strange, they started taking samples and started investigating this. When they sent the samples to the authorities, what did the authorities do? They destroyed the samples. Now, why would you do that? You do it because you already know where it comes from, right? Number two. Mm -hmm. Number three, um, you've also got not only the destruction of the samples, you not only have got you know, the, the history of the labs there, but also, and three, is the cover-up that's there. What yes. happened, they had this big potluck dinner in Wuhan. After they knew there was this uh, epidemic going on, 40,000 right. families had a potluck there, 40 thousand and then all of a sudden as we know the rest is history and then we find out in the first bit of january well there's some type of epidemic going on in wuhan china just coincidentally enough where the level four lab is and so all of a sudden now it um you know oh, and, it, it, and it just happened to pop up by the way yeah. after a uh, several members uh, political members slash military members of iran uh went back home yes and uh the, the one of the first international dots on the map outside of China was Tehran. Totally. Interesting, right? Yeah, very much so, because see, uh, what people don't realize, China has this called BRI, Built and Road Initiative. What they do, they invest in countries that, that need the investment. Two of the biggest investments in the world now are Iran and Italy. Does that kind of ring a bell, what's going on with the virus right now? Exactly. What do they do? Well. They invest in the infrastructure of these countries, but what you have to do is hire Chinese workers financed by Chinese banks, uh, and, and, and before you know it, China ends up they owning them. There's something like four ports in Italy now that are owned by China. There's something like 330,000 workers in northern Italy who are Chinese there. Listen, Don, you're talking so fast, I'm a, and it's so important, I'm afraid people are going to miss this. We'll, we'll go over it again. You are talking yeah. about people, listen, Don is talking about China purchasing which if you know anything about the Venetian Empire, they were brilliant because they weren't very good at warfare. They were very good at business. And they controlled ports. It's an ancient tactic. It's brilliant. China is purchasing or in control or influencing how many ports, Don? Four. And do you know that the city of Los Angeles owns the port of Los Angeles and that China is making an offer to buy the port of Los Angeles in Los Angeles, California, 39 miles from where we're sitting? Yeah. What in the world is going on? <laughs> Don, when the virus came out and when it became very virulent and strong and it began to affect us, we saw our market crash in a, in a day. Yeah, we did. Back to back. Back to back. 
Friends, do you know, family of God, do you know what happened? As soon as that happened, when, when, when market value of some of the greatest companies in the world here in the United States went down, guess what happened? No one's talking about it. China started buying up that stock. China started buying through shelves, through covers. Companies began buying up key stakes of U.S. corporations. The question then is this, Don. Is it possible that three years ago, a president knocked the mask off of China's charade, exposed their falsehood to the world, their economy plummeted, and for them to save themselves, once again, a virus had to walk out of Wuhan, yep. and they would gladly risk their own citizens to save them, their, own, their own communism, and specifically to affect the global markets. They didn't even have to attack. Not one person in America had to get sick. Others yep. had to get sick in the yep. world to affect the U.S. economy. And China is very much, if this is released by China, their war tactic was better than a nuclear bomb. Yeah, it, it sure was. And see, the reason, and let's explain to the audience where we're going with this too, because one of the interesting things about last day's Bible prophecy, we find that U.S. isn't a player, Jack. We're not, not a player. Here. And something, for some reason, we're not going to be a player. And there's a bunch of different scenarios. But see, this here is one possible scenario of taking us out of being a player. Now, I'm praying and hoping it doesn't right, happen, of course. but it's not impossible that it does. But sooner or later, we're not going to be a player in the world. Uh, there's other possible scenarios. I, I like to tend to think that U.S. will be so interested in China and the Pacific. That's why they'll be out of the Middle East because Trump's trying to do that. And China and, and U.S. You know, will be you know, at loggerheads with one another. But the point is, the U.S., you know, the great, you know, what we had something like six, $17 trillion, the stock market worldwide had gone up. The, and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, we're almost looking at a, not a recession, a depression now. So, um, again... <sighs> our president currently is speaking in such a way to inspire the nation. Yep. In fact, the last few days he's been speaking encouragingly. Stock market has gone up tremendously the last two days. But the reason is, and this is not, people do not want to hear this. Our country, the United States, just preparing the stimulus package to give Americans money to keep the economy or to spur on the economy. When you're hungry, you don't want candy. Because one of the side effects is a, is a sugar rush. This giving of free money, so to speak, it's not free, but it's nope. free money, so to speak, it is going to be sh very short-lived. Our economists tell us, and our Treasury Department is telling us, that th this nation, as it is, cannot continue in the condition that it's in with all of us being home, no. or America is going to fail. And if America fails, the, Wu this, the Wuhan virus is, will be a joke compared to how many people will be affected by suicide, will be affected by sickness, will be affected by um, uh, 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 homelessness, joblessness. More people will perish if we don't go back to work versus taking the risk of getting sick by going to work. This is an absolute Hollywood movie scenario. Indeed. Talk about that for a moment. Yeah, and this is, this is where President Trump's between the proverbial rock and the hard place. He's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. But uh, we do have to get to work back here. Like he said in that uh, broadcast, America was, we're created to work. We're not created just to sit around. We're the most prosperous country in the world. Then all of a sudden, everything seems to go south. So we do need to get back. So that's the trade-off. So, Jack, if there's ever a time the Christians need to pray to ask the Lord for his grace, for his mercy. Now, again, grace and mercy, not because we deserve it, 
Like the prophet Daniel in Daniel 9, Lord, we have sinned against you. We have turned our back on you. We ask for your mercy. And that's what we need to do right now because it's a very, very difficult time uh, with respect to the economy and the country. There are people watching us right now wondering, you know, what am I going to do next week? I'm waiting for, you know, for this $2 trillion, some of it to come my way. But like you said, it's the sugar rush. It's not going to last forever. We need to get back to work. But then we've got, you know, again, the virus is, is moving across the country. The only good news of that, even though it is more virulent, the death rate is still very, very small, very small. People need to be encouraged by this. Um, now, it may have changed recently, but the last time I saw the reporting out of MIT's data agreed with MD Anderson's data, which agreed with Johns Hopkins University data, that globally, those, listen, those, those who proved positive, they were tested positive, not all of those who were positive got sick. Nope. But those who got sick, 98.6 of them recovered. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's about 1.2 to 1.4% of fatalities. And thank you for saying that because people listen. Don't panic, don't panic. I got to tell you, now's, now's the great time to turn off normal broadcasting yeah. and, and tune into his channel, yeah. uh, television, and, and stay tuned with us as well because listen, all of a sudden now, uh, no one's reporting anybody getting shot in LA or Chicago. <laughs> When's the last time you heard about a bank robbery in Miami? Every moment of your 24 cycle of news is a, another person died of the virus, another yeah, person exactly. died of the virus. You would think the whole world is dying. Yeah. And our media is our media is killing us uh, by focusing on this. Yeah, there's a, a, a couple of sites that give you the latest data, and every time they give it, it shows the number of people that are affirmed with case and number of people who died. I keep doing my, I'm getting really good because use a calculator, and it's anywhere from 1.2 percent to 1.4 that are fatalities, and, and it's say pretty consistent right, right now, even with the, the terrible things happening in New York and elsewhere. And so it is, you know, again, if you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of millions of people, that's a lot of people, but it is not going to, first of all, it's not going to wipe us out. Let's remember this. That's right. Jack. Jesus it can't. Said, it can't, because Jesus said he's going to come back. There are going to be people <laughs> on this planet. He said, but he did say this, unless he did come back, no flesh would be saved. Now, he says that in the context of wars, doesn't yeah. he? But it's interesting, isn't it? So first thing we want to encourage people, that we're not all going to die. And our president who I, is the last person on earth I'd want to be, is doing an amazing job. I can't, it's amazing. Uh, let's, let's move on. Let, guys, next slide to kind of prompt us. We can kind of see what the next slide might be on the screen that you might have. Throw anything up. China will emerge from the coronavirus uh, stronger than the US, ex, uh, US experts warn us. So uh, yeah, maybe so. That depends. I don't know if I buy that exactly. Uh, if America recovers, if America gets back to work, uh, you, could, you could actually see a recovery of the United States that will actually be, will surpass where we were. That's if we, Don, economists tell us what needs to happen for that to happen, but you and I would preempt the economists and say, that will happen if we repent as a nation. Correct. Tell that's, us why. Well, that's because God's looking at us and he, he tells us in his word, you know, he looks on the hearts of nations. Remember Nineveh, the people there repented when there wouldn't even offer of repentance. Yeah. Jonah comes and says in 40 days, you're going to be destroyed. Really? And they believed him. Well, maybe if we repent, God will show mercy on us. Well, how much more here? And I really think, Jack, again, I'm an optimist here in all this because we've got a couple things going. We've got a president who is a businessman, who is yep. a tremendous businessman, number one. And then the three things he's done, like I said, with Israel, moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the Golan Heights, recognizing that as part of Israel, and then the uh, Judea Samaria, the West Bank, saying, no, it's not occupied territory, being a friend of Israel. Genesis 12, 1 to 3, still in play. He will bless those that bless the descendants of Abraham and curse those that curse. Yep. So I'm an optimist how I, I believe it's going to work out. But, that, but we have a responsibility to confess, to pray, and get serious about our relationship with the Lord. That's what we need to do as people of the world that are watching this. In fact, I want to encourage everyone that um, if you know your Bible, and I know many of you tuning in, you don't know your Bible, and that's okay. Listen, you need to get a Bible and read it because it's more relevant than tomorrow's news. Here's the deal. God says of any nation, 
of those who are called by his name. That means, do you believe in him? That if you would would repent of your sins, repent of your sins and seek his face, God promises to heal your land. But you've got to turn. Personally, now Don's going to have to hold me back on this one because I'm very (laughs) passionate about it. When I read my Old Testament, every nation is a nation of sinners. We've all sinned. But there seems to be sins that God hates more than others. He hates all sin, but there's certain sins that just sets him off. And at the top, throughout Israel's history, is the sin of sacrificing human life. God hates it. And God destroyed cultures that are no longer in existence because they sacrificed their children. And isn't it bizarre that in the United States, the Democrat Party, head by, headed up by Nancy Pelosi, every word, every other word coming out of her mouth is, we've got to keep aborting babies. Yep. Mm-hmm. Our nation is in crisis, and for days we w- couldn't pass a bill to help our companies in America because she wanted in the coronavirus bailout, money to kill babies. Nancy Pelosi, that is demonic. She's sick. That is perverse. God hates it. And I believe that America must repent of slaughtering babies in the womb or else we're going down. And I'm not being a bad guy. We want to be optimistic. Here's the optimism. Repent of our nation slaughtering babies in the womb. And God will heal our land. If we do not stop this, Don, it's not going to be well for us. And here we go. Even now, she is yelling and screaming about no way can citizens get help unless we agree to fund the abortion of babies. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because they list the essential businesses that must stay open. And one of the, the states are making this on a case by case basis, which is interesting. Massachusetts said abortion is an essential business. The industry is still there. Governor DeWine of Ohio, bless his heart, said, no, it's not. We're shutting them down. And yet they're aborting kids anyway. They're against the governor's orders. Governor Abbott of Texas, same thing. This is not an essential business. We're not going to have it here. So we have people standing up, Jack, and, and standing up to that today. And yet, uh, Nancy Pelosi and the left, part of this, this what they, the pork they snuck in, is not only like the, the harvesting of ballots, the things, ballot stuffing and that, but the abortion thing too, which is, again, a terrible blight on our country. One. I think it's number one in God's Yeah, name. yeah, I think it is too. Yeah. I don't know how we went from coronavirus to that, but um, just keep going. I okay. want to hear you. Okay, well, anyway, interesting. I, I always like, because... I do, you know, most people, and I do his channel five days a week, uh, 10 to 11 every day at hischannel.com, breaking news with the latest news. So I'm constantly watching the news. And Senator Blackburn, Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee, just said something. Born again Christian. Yeah, I know. Something that we just said. In the control the madman in Beijing have over America's drug industry. Amen, amen. And people would be surprised about how many born-again Christians there are in this administration, how many people there are actually serving. Um, There was a story the other day I gave this because I always want to give some optimism with all the pessimism. Uh, There was a digital Bible study that that the re-election campaign of Donald Trump were meeting together and doing it online because they couldn't get together. And who would ever know that his re-election campaign meets for a Bible study first thing before getting into the the, uh, ins and outs of um, re-electing him? Well, Don, I, you probably can, would. <laughs> I can actually tell you that I was on that call this morning at 1030 uh, Pacific time Wonderful. with that group of, uh, of leadership for uh, Bible studies for the uh, cur- various members of yep. the administration. You are correct. In fact, according to Vice President Mike Pence, uh, it's his understanding that there are more Bible studies taking place among cabinet members than any other time in recorded American history. 
Yeah, it's amazing how many people close to the president are really Bible-believing Christians. You think of Mike Pompeo, obviously. As Tremendous born-again believer. I had a chance to ask uh, Mike Pompeo a couple months ago, if you could do anything in the world, what would you do? You, you have been a decorated war hero yep. as a tank commander. Yep. You have been uh, a congressman. You've been a business owner. You've been director of the Central Intelligence Agency. And now you're one of Trump's trusted allies in government. Uh, what would, if you could make, if you could wave a wand, what would you do? Do you know what his answer was, Don? What was that? He said, for, for Susan and I to be back in Kansas at our church being Sunday school teachers. Wow. Wow. A man about the world, mm -hmm. I'd rather be back in Kansas doing Sunday school. Now, what does that say about a person's priorities, the things that really matter in life? And that's what we're talking about here today, Jack, the that's gospel right. of Jesus Christ, the fact that Christ can change lives, the fact that we do have hope. We're not pessimistic with what's going right. on because we know the outcome of yeah. the story. The Lord already tells us we win in the end. And yeah. so we don't know how we're going to get there. And it's going to be some difficult times. But when we read and what we see all the time, like, again, you can't make this stuff up of all the <laughs> prophecies that are in place right now, setting the stage to be fulfilled. You literally can't make this stuff up. We got a story somewhere about Saudi Arabia and Russia being at loggerheads. Isn't it interesting, Ezekiel 38, thank you, they just put on the screen. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that Ezekiel 38 has those that will invade Israel in the last days and those will protest? Russia is the leader of the invasion. Saudi is the leader of the group that protests. And now they're at loggerheads over the uh, oil prices where they dumped all this cheap oil. Uh, MBS, Mohammed bin Salman did that a few weeks ago, dumped it on the world. And initially, that's why the stock market went down that one day on the Monday, not because of the coronavirus at first, but because of the oil glut that was there. And that's why, you know, the oil futures went down, this and that. And now it's to the place where they're practically giving it away, except our gas station isn't yet. They're still charging me an arm and a leg. Well, yeah. But bottom line is, notice what you see. <laughs> One side, the U.S., and, uh, another, and then, of course, urging Saudi to do this. Saudi's on this side, Russia on this side. See, the players already listed what side they're going to be on. They're already lined up perfectly, just as the Bible said. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. And, and I assume, guys, you can yell if, you, if this is true, but I assume the audience can see the slide. Um, can they? Okay, so that's, that's Secretary Mike Pompeo on the left. This was just uh, today or yesterday. And um, this, this uh, crown prince, he's an interesting guy. He's very young for one, yep. which is good for us. He's young. Uh, he loves the United States. He loves American movies. Uh, he's the one that has ordered uh, AMC theaters to be built throughout his country. Yeah. He's the guy that's uh, in, encouraging women to have rights and drive in Saudi Arabia. And what Don just said a moment ago is, is key because you see that picture. Pompeo is trying to get the prince to work things out with Russia because it's better for the world if they work it out. The point is, you've got America trying to get Saudi and Russia to calm down, which backs up to what Don just said. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel 38, that could happen at any time, yep. that Russia will be an enemy, or I should say against, in some capacity, Saudi Arabia, because yes. they do not agree when Russia invades Israel from the north. It's clearly written in scripture. Yeah, and, and what we see, like we said, Jack, every day when all these things are going on, let's not miss the fact that other things are going on the same time as the virus. We don't want to be misdirected either with the oil thing there, what's going on in Israel right now with the government taking place there. Talk the to, yeah, uh, tell us about that. Okay, what, what's happened there is that um, th this is their third election they've just had. They can't put a government together. You've got 120 seats in their parliament called the Knesset. You have to have a, a combination of 61 to get your prime minister. Well, the last two elections, neither group could get more than... Uh, enough. This last election, Prime Minister Netanyahu, we thought on election night that he got 60, ends up getting 58. All right, you need three more. Uh -uh. The other side has 62. So what do they try to do? Benny Gantz, the leader of this blue and white party that lost a number of seats there, four, a switch of four from the last election, contrary to every promise he made, yep. said, we're going to put a coalition together with the joint list parties, 15 parties, the joint list, which include people that want to see the destruction of the state of Israel. Literally. Literally, one of the other MPs that are on that list uh, praised a, a, a terrorist who 
you know, crush the skull of a four-year-old, when the rockets are shooting uh, from Gaza towards Siderot and they're in southern Israel, these MPs were saying, well, Israel shouldn't shoot back. They should just take it. And, and this, is the, this is the coalition he wants to put a government. Well, today the headline was, and praise God we could emphasize that, they can't form a coalition. There's no way the, joint, the, uh, uh, the blue and white's going to form, form one with the joint list. They can't get it together. Isn't nope. it amazing while Europe is in this upheaval and Italy mm -hmm. is fighting for its, its existence, Israel is so leaderless in a sense. Totally. I mean, yep. Netanyahu has obviously tremendous leadership skills, but the people are unable to come together. Um, I, find it, I find it possibly prophetically intriguing that it's not Greece that is fighting for its existence right now. Right. It's Italy. And in Italy, there's a place called Rome. Yep. And Rome quite possibly could be, if we understand Bible prophecy correctly, the place where a European leader will find at least one of his governing seats yep. positioned. It could be his religious headquarters, we don't know, but it's possible that Italy is crying out for someone to rescue them at this time. It's possible that, that Israel is crying out for somebody to rescue them at this time. If America goes down, the world is going to be crying out because the world is so dependent upon the U.S. in all kinds of ways, looking for a rescuer. I'm wondering, Don, if that rescuer, hypothetically, is, is walking planet Earth. He, he very well could be. First John 2.18, in the days of our Lord and soon thereafter, John wrote that many antichrists have already come, but one antichrist is coming, a final antichrist, a final world leader. He's called the man of sin, the first beast of Revelation chapter 13. He's going to be a political leader, and he's going to have all the answers. The Bible calls him a mouth speaking great things. So what it assumes is a world that's chaotic, like what we're seeing now, a world that doesn't have answers. Countries that seemingly like Italy, like you said, like Israel, that need really, really leadership and help. Well, here's a person who comes on the scene in the place of Jesus Christ is the anti-Messiah or the false Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 5, I have come in my Father's yep. name, you did not receive me. Another will come in his own name, him you will receive. And the world is getting perfectly set up for that. Not only that, with the exponential increase of technology, that sets it up perfectly for him. Because, again, no, uh, there's going. an assumption in Scripture in three different passages, Jack, of a world right now we're living in that the world was so foreign to the Bible days. No one could buy or sell, Revelation 13, without a mark on your right hand or your forehead, worldwide. How in the world could you monitor something like that with every business transaction? What, are you going to have someone standing there when people exchange money? Well, money is going to be a thing of the past. Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, said next generation of kids won't know what currency money is because it's all going to be digital, and particularly now with the virus going on, my wife is in the finance business there, and these are heroes there because they're handling money every day. Yeah. yeah, they have to do it, the tellers and that, but somebody has to do it to distribute that, and they're putting their, their self on the line because, you know, of, of all the possible things that are go along with that. But anyway, so we're moving towards that, and there have been calls now, too, because of this, because of the dirtiness of money, let's just make currency digital worldwide, and that's worth coming to. Well, let's be honest. Um, the truth of the matter is, it's really great, for example, that our animals have chips in them. Yep. Our animals in, in California, maybe the uh, entire U.S., our pets are chipped at the vet. So when our dog runs away somewhere, they can scan it, and they know exactly where he lives and his name and whatever that, that stuff is. Great idea. Um, it's a great idea. Yes, sir, it is. And uh, a cashless society is a great idea. Yeah. Um, I don't carry cash. Take a look at this coronavirus stimulus offered by House, that is the U.S. House of Representatives. Financial Services Committee creates new digital dollar. This is not a joke. This is not um, a spoof. No. Uh, it's exactly what Don was just talking yeah. about a moment ago. Yeah, and it's coming, and the Bible assumes that type of world, Jack. And, and can you imagine someone even living 100 years ago or 50 years ago saying, what do you mean monitoring trans, uh, transactions worldwide? You can't do that. How do you know what's going on in Mongolia, South America, even here in our country? Some, but again, with the technology we have today, it's all digital, and like most of us don't pay with cash anymore. We don't carry it or we carry very little uh, simply because it's, it's simple, it's simpler, and it gets easier and easier now to pay with, you know, you've got Apple Pay and things 
things like that, the digital cash that we use. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's here. And uh, so the world is perfectly set up that way. So you see Saudi Arabia against Russia, that's set up perfectly as the Bible says. The cashless society, perfectly set up. The need for a leadership, perfectly set up. Are we starting to see a pattern here, Jack, of what was written <laughs> so from two to 4,000 years ago? While you're going, I'm thinking uh, Matthew 24, yep. uh, Revelation 13, uh, 1 John 2, Ezekiel 38. Yep. I mean, Bible verses are just flying by me while you're talking. Correct. And it's, it's absolutely amazing because I think, we talked about it earlier, some of our good friends and some of our mentors in life, yep. I think of Dr. Tim LaHaye, I yep. knew him. He would yep. be jumping up and down right yeah. now. Uh, on this stage, numerous times, Dr. John Wolverid mm -hmm. taught here mm -hmm. five different times. Wow. That's a, he would be jumping up and down. Chuck Smith, Chuck Missler, Hal Lindsey. Yep. Hal's still uh, with us, Hal's still with us, but... <laughs> Absolutely I, I, amazing days in which we live in. Yeah, it, it is. I, and uh, we were always looking forward to these days. And it's getting, as we said, closer and closer because we see everything set up. Now, again, we're not going to limit God in timing. We can't correct. say it's got to happen in this time or that. People made that mistake in the past. But again, Jesus said, you can know the times and the seasons. And my goodness, when all the signs are there and the world is desperately now looking for leadership of someone who can bring them out of this, this is where this man of sin can come on the scene, particularly, like you said, in these countries such as Italy, which has been bought and paid for now by China, uh, Israel now, which needs leadership. Uh, they need to find somebody. And unfortunately, that person will appear, unfortunately, because the people will receive him. Because again, he's got all the answers, a mouth speaking great things, Yet he is literally the devil himself living in this personage. That's why he's the final antichrist, the final personage in this world who's come up like in the past with, uh, with Goliath, uh, um, Saul, Alexander the Great, mm -hmm. uh, Antiochus IV. You've got Nimrod, the first one back in the book of uh, Genesis. All who are anti-God as, as world leaders, as leaders. Uh, but this one will be the one, uh, the most... Um, you know, the worst of them all, the culmination, isn't the it, final Antichrist. Isn't it interesting that the book of Daniel leads us to believe that this guy is, this guy is ego with legs. Yep. Right? He speaks pompous words against yes. the God of heaven. Sure does. Interesting thing, Don. Um, it's slide number nine. All around the world, Saudi Arabia, the Vatican, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, Vacant, silent, mm. empty, eerie. Very eerie. What is full? Homes all around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, never on a global scale at this moment, world history is being made as you hear our voices because people are confined, confined to their homes around the world and what gets Don and I excited <laughs> is that 2,000 years ago, the church was born in a home. And all of a sudden, for the first time in 2,000 years, the church is back in the home. Is the trumpet going to blow soon? Are we going to go up soon? I don't know. Will we come back, and will this massive auditorium be filled once again? I don't know. But I can tell you this. We have never reached more people with the gospel of Jesus Christ than we are right now during this coronavirus season. So in that, I thank God for it. I know God didn't cause it, but God's using it. And remember what the gospel is. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and mine and Don's. Jesus rose again from the dead to justify us. He died for our sins, but then he rose again for our justification. And Jesus Christ was God incarnate, that is God in the flesh, come to this world to fulfill the Hebrew prophets, the Old Testament prophecies of the Hebrew Bible. And he ascended back to heaven, and Christ is coming again. And the things that are going on around the world, Jesus warned that in the last days we would see these things. Things like, of, in, one, in three minutes, a 7.5 earthquake, mm -hmm. a 7.8 earthquake, a 7.8 again earthquake. Jesus said, when you begin to see these things come to pass, look up. For your redemption draws near. The Bible tells us we will not know the, time, the day or the hour of his coming, but concerning the times and the seasons, you'll know perfectly well. Amazing time to be alive. Trust Christ. So do you think the coronavirus was released as 
a biological weapon to disrupt the current administration. I have my opinion. Um, I'm just going to give you my opinion. I underline, it's my opinion. It's my opinion. I believe China had to release it. I believe the guy that is known as the whistleblower in the laboratory who was killed, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I absolutely believe that this is biological warfare launched by China because China was in its... If China, if China didn't do this, they couldn't survive the Trump administration. Something, they had to disrupt the world to disrupt this administration and its success. And I absolutely... I believe that in time it will be proven that China... Uh, that this was a weaponized uh, virus intentionally. Yeah, you think about it, Jack. Like I said earlier, you've got 3.7 million square miles of the country, and, and sup supposedly, coincidentally, the virus you know, erupts right in the only city where a level four lab is with all these pathogens, which previously had escaped from a lab in Beijing in 2004, the SARS virus. And then when they started looking at the people, they started looking at the you know, samples of the pathogen. Immediately, they were told by the higher-ups to destroy them. Why is that if you want to get rid of some type of epidemic that's going on that was naturally come about by some food in the market? It's, uh, you know, again, um, just logically speaking, I don't, I don't have enough faith to believe that happened by chance. Of all the cities of the 3.7 million square miles, Wuhan, right there, the only one with the level four lab, the only one, you know, the same people who lost the SARS thing in 2004 working there, and then they destroy the evidence. Well, it seems to me something's fishy there. Absolutely. Yeah. It's what? What is? It's the preponderance of evidence. Yeah, exactly. The preponderance. Yeah, yeah. That's how. And a, and a jury instruction is this. It's not. It's beyond a reasonable doubt. Not beyond any doubt, but beyond a reasonable, reasonable. doubt. Uh, it's the preponderance evidence, seemingly, that this came about uh, purposely designed as a bioweapon, or is it something that just naturally came out? Well, I guess theoretically, it's possible it could have come, but the same city. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you said it earlier. What's the mathematical odds yeah. that a, a great contingency of people from Wuhan? would go to northern Italy. Yeah, because, yeah, 330,000 Chinese at least live in northern Italy in the Lombard region, and because that's where, you know, the garments are there, that's yep. the whole fashion era in Milan, and, uh, and they live all together, too. Unfortunately, the, the Chinese workers there, I, I was reading, you know, like a 1,500-square-foot house of three families living in it. Yeah, so, not healthy. And they're going back and forth from Wuhan. Remember, it's the Chinese New Year when they came back and forth? That's and, exactly correct. Yeah, and um, you can see how, why there, and why yeah. Iran, why it just exploded there. Well, my thanks to Pastor Jack Hibbs and Don Stewart for their recent Happening Now format at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, California, trying to present some cutting-edge issues as it concerns our new world and the new America here on Understanding the Times Radio. God is always trying to get our attention. I am told interest in prayer and prophecy-related issues. Well, they're both soaring. As a matter of fact, nearly half of American adults believe that the coronavirus pandemic is a wake-up call from God, according to a new poll. The world may never let a crisis go to waste, but neither does the Lord. He will use everything for good and for His eternal purposes. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week. If you just can't be by a radio when Understanding the Times airs on our 850 stations, catch it electronically on our YouTube channel, on oneplace.com, on his channel, and on our website, olivetreeviews.org. Write to us through our website. We get our mail by writing to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. That's Box 1452. Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. All gifts are tax deductible. And while things seem disturbing and even chaotic, remember that everything is falling into place. Yeah.